Hello, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Chris McMeeking, uh, coming to you from DQ Systems. I'm a uh, senior software engineer, native mobile accessibility expert, and owner of our native uh, mobile accessibility products. And I am here to today to talk to you about talkback accessibility and a particularly interesting uh, talkback accessibility violation. Uh, that we've been working on, uh, trying to develop rules for that we can analyze automatically and also some best practices around how you can accomplish uh, similar things in an accessible way. And so what I have here is an emulator. And uh, one of the cool things about the Android accessibility ecosystem is when you see emulators, they work essentially exactly like devices. I'm just doing this on an emulator uh, because it's a, a little more convenient for demo purposes. Um, but when you see this emulator, um, it is working just like a device in my hand would work. And then you see here, I have this toast popping up at the bottom, so blocking off switch. Um, that is the text that would be read out loud by a, uh, I talk back if I had the device in my hand, right? So notice here I'm bouncing back and forth between these two um, switches. Um, and if I go outside of this switch and click on here as a touch to explore gesture, um, I focus a, another view that is kind of wrapping these two switches together. And that is the, the fundamental issue that I want to talk about here is we have this, this nesting of elements together. And what happens is it becomes very unclear what type of thing you're trying to accomplish as a, as a screen reader user. Your picture, picture you're blind and, and you are going through this in the different ways you can navigate, right? So as a touch to explore user, I am finding elements that are nested within other elements. And that's, that's kind of confusing because if I, if I drag my finger across the screen, I can end up hitting multiple touch targets within the same touch target. And that, that's, a, that's a confusing thing. Right, and then the other thing, the other problem you get with this is let's go in and let's do tab navigation. My, my tab navigation versus my swipe navigation actually end up being different because in sometimes things are focusable and sometimes things are accessibility focusable, and so my swipe navigation, my keyboard navigation end up being different type of touch targets. I just hit the right arrow button and I do different things than if I hit the tab key. Right, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm hitting tab key, tab key, tab key. I focus one set of things, um, whereas if I hit the arrow key, I end up navigating in a completely different manner, and that's confusing. Um, and so what we want to do is A, be able to identify this issue, and B, we want to understand exactly why it's happening. What is causing these multiple touch targets, um, and what other issues might we see outside of just what TalkBack Focus is doing when we understand the core of this problem, right? So, so let me go over here to my uh, a test accessibility tools and notice here I'm sharing, uh, I have this screen here where I can show focus and as I scroll over the screenshot, I'm seeing the different areas of accessibility focus. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up my developer tools uh, and come down so that I can analyze one of these controls. So let's dig into the accessibility property of one of these controls. And notice here, I have a couple of switches within a linear layout. And so let's look at these switches. So we're, we're scrolling over the switches. Uh, we have important for accessibility, true. Uh, obviously, if, if we didn't have important for accessibility, we wouldn't even be uh, delivering these to the accessibility hierarchy. Um, uh, resource ID isn't significant in here. Clickable true, right? So we have two views here that are clickable. Both of these switches um, are clickable and also the linear layout. They're both, they're all clickable, they're all focusable. And that is actually, in this case, why they're being accessibility focused, right? So when we look at the text, we get null, uh, text blocking off, text blocking off. Um, but focusable true and clickable true. And that's going to be really confusing, right? Because not only are we going to want to try and activate one of these controls, but when we, when we focus this bigger rectangle and we activate it, what does that even mean? What does, what does making one of these things and, and activating a collection of active elements, what does that even mean? That's a confusing thing. And, and you can see, and, and obviously we've kind of marked up this demo here, 
um, as kind of a, a, a mocking this situation, but you can actually end up seeing this in a lot of different things. One of the places where I see this is coming from some hybrid libraries that are potentially relying on WebView, and the WebView ends up being clickable and also containing other clickable elements. And that's just that's just a very confusing situation to be in as a talkback user who's hearing that they can that they can action some element that compose that is composed of other actionable elements. Another place where you can see this create accessibility problems is uh, for switch control. If you're a switch control user and you are cycling through the active elements on the screen, you end up um, at, at minimum having an unnecessary target, which if you have a one second delay on your scanning um, is frustrating. Um, but at the same time, uh, you can end up activating something that you don't intend to activate or that has, in this case, I would, I would define it as undefined behavior. And so what we wanna do is go in and probably either make this not actionable uh, this, in this case, the solution would be let's make this this outline not focusable. Um, in the case of, like I said, the uh, hybrid application, why is a, a, a wrapping web view even clickable to begin with? That's a, that's a confusing thing, right? And that's the scenario we have here. We just don't want this thing to be clickable at all. Um, and I think this is this is a similar fix here. Then when we get down here, what we have is we have um, an informative control, and let's let's uh, let's go ahead and zoom in on that, right? So let's go here. So here we have an element uh, that is uh, we have this uh, informative element here. Uh, so we have clickable false, focusable false. That's good, right? We have a switch here, which is. Uh, going to be clickable and focusable. And we have the linear layout, which is clickable and focusable. And so what we've done here is we have made the touch target size for this nice and big. We just no longer need to interact with this switch, right? So what we wanna do is if we go into our emulator, let's go back, talk back. So notice here, as I try to click on these things, I, I'm clicking on uh, the minor, the informative control here, and I can't focus it individually, but I can focus the talkback switch individually, right? And that's, that's good behavior because I have this nice big touch target. And so what we want to do basically is say, hey, all of the behaviors that you can get if we make this linear layout actionable, um, all of the information is wrapped in this control. And so what we're going to do, come up here and let's go down to this uh, good example of this where we have this passing, right? And so what we want to do is say, hey, all of the information is available on this switch, or potentially, um, as a best practice, we could wrap all of that information together. So on the example over here, we could say, hey, all of the information conveyed by this switch is available in this rectangle, and then provide the switch action on that big layout. And what that allows is for a nice big touch target um, without having to even focus the individual controls, right? And that would be a, a best practice in this case. It's a little more painful to code up. In our case on the emulator, what we have is the most simple version, which is to associate the two with a label for. That way in switch control, you end up only um, uh, focusing on the switch. In TalkBack, you can access the two controls individually. That's the easiest way to code it because ultimately what we do is we just end up associating these two with the label four attribute. Um, but if you wanna go the next mile, what you can do is wrap those two things together in one accessible target, add the action, and then you end up having a nice big touch target across the whole screen for the simple control. And that's the way you see it work in a lot of uh, settings activities or whatever, and, and um, you end up seeing this big touch target for that one control. Um, that is all I had to share today. Thank you for listening.